29. For each of the following molecules, indicate the hybridization requested and whether or not the electrons will be delocalized. Okay. And then in this case, we have to draw carbon dioxide, which is CO2, and we have to find the central carbon's hybridization. Now, in order to find out any hybridization, the easiest way to do this is to just draw the Lewis structure. It is one extra step, but I promise you, with the visual of seeing what the, the molecule actually looks like, finding the hybridization would be much easier. Now, we have a whole playlist on the channel just designated to drawing Lewis structures and there's the uh, steps on the screen for you. Uh, if you need a much more in-depth explanation, you could always go to there. Uh, we're just going to do a quick inversion here. So let's get down to it. The first thing we have to do is find out which one of these elements is the center or the central element. Now, they do give us a hint that the central C is going to be the right uh, element. <laughs> I was trying to find another word that had the E at the end, but eh, whatever. Anyway, so central C is in the middle, surrounded by the two oxygens. So thank you. Now we're just going to draw the valence electrons, right? Each oxygen has six valence electrons because it's in group 6A or 16 on the periodic table. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And each carbon has four valence electrons because it's in group 4A or 14. So one, two, three, four. And now, single bond it up and just see what's going on. We want those outer electrons to have the octet rule. But these oxygens, they both have two, four, six, seven. They want eight. So I'm going to make a double bond, another dot to dot. And now this oxygen's good, two, four, six, eight. And the same issue over here, two, four, six, seven. So we just need another dot to dot just to get that oxygen happy. Now the oxygen's happy, it's got two, four, six, eight electrons. And now the carbon in the middle also has the octet rule, two, four, six, eight. So we're good. Now we're going to find the hybridization of the carbon. And hybridization is just your orbitals that are meshing together to form your overlap for your bonds. So there's sp, sp2, sp3, sp3d, and sp3d2 hybridizations. The easiest way to memorize your hybridizations is just know how many letters there are. So for sp3, there's an s and three p's, right? p3, three p's. That's a total of four letters. If I strip one p away, that's sp2, that's a total of three letters. And if I strip it away again, that's just sp, that's a total of two letters. Did I say two letters for when I'm supposed to say three? I don't know anymore, but I think you get the hint, right? So just know that the number of letters corresponds to the number of things, right? And what is classified as one thing? Well, one single bond or one double bond or one triple bond, even though they have multiple bonds here, it's still classified as one thing, or you got your one lone pair of electrons. But we're only caring about carbon here. So what does carbon have? Well, carbon has one double bond, that's one thing. And then another carbon has, well, the other side of the carbon has another double bond. So this carbon only has two things because it doesn't have any lone pairs. I can't use these lone pairs because that's not to the carbon. So two things, two letters, SP hybridized, right? And if I just show you that, two things, two letters, SP. Now, will those electrons be delocalized? Now, delocalized is a fancy way in chemistry to say, are there uh, electrons that are specifically bound with atoms or can they float around? Now, to look for delocalization, you're looking for multiple bonds. And in this case, we do have the multiple bonds. We have a double bond here. But when your electrons are delocalized, basically you will start having, or you'll start seeing a trend where you could have drawn the compound a little bit differently. Delocalization would probably look something like this. Now I'm just drawing this just to show you in which you have one double bond on one side and a single bond, but you have two of the same elements. 
you could have said, well, I could have actually drawn the double bond here and put the single bond over here. But in our case, since I have two double bonds, there's no other way of drawing this compound, right? Because I, if I swap the double bonds, they're literally the same. There's no two different drawings. This comes from resonance. So will electrons be delocalized here? No, they will not be delocalized. They will be called just localized. So they will be localized electrons. So I'll say not delocalized. So just know the difference between delocalized, uh, delocalized is something called just localized electrons. And that's it. So those are your two answers. Let's just color this in, make it all nice and pretty, beautiful. And we are done. What do you think? I hope this helped. Uh, thanks so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Uh, thank you so much for all your support throughout this whole journey thus far. It's been an incredible journey. And my brother and I, we really do appreciate you all. And we love hearing feedback that this, this uh, channel has been helping you out with your homeworks and studying. And let's just, let's just keep learning, all right? Thank you for your support again. And I hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.